I have been fortunate to see some beautiful parts of our country and world, but none more so than these Blue Ridge Mountains we call home. In 1988, a nonprofit was founded to help preserve the natural beauty of this region and the iconic road that runs through it, the famed Blue Ridge Parkway. But in 2021, this nonprofit was forced to pivot when the National Park Service discontinued its relationship with the organization and no longer allowed its hundreds of volunteers and members to work on the parkway. How that organization has redefined itself since then, while also preparing for its first ever fundraising event, is the story of today's episode of Buzz. I'm Julie Whalen, Executive Director of Friends of the Blue Ridge. Friends was organized in 1988 as an official park partner with the National Park Service to support the Blue Ridge Parkway. Our volunteers and members help support park staff in maintaining the parkway up until the end of 2019 when our park agreement expired. So starting in 2020, we reshifted our focus and kept our skill set for what we were doing on the parkway and shifted it to Blue Ridge communities where our volunteers uh, live, work, and play. Until you come here, you don't realize what a unique experience the Blue Ridge region is. So I joined staff um, just shy of five years ago, so it was December of 2017. Between that starting point and where we are today, I mean, we've seen a pandemic, we've seen the expiration of our park agreement, um, we've seen a lot. <laughs> and it has been one of the greatest joys of my life is to have worked with these volunteers while we really found our way through it all and really landed on solid ground. Some of the friends, volunteers, are the most, they're just beautiful people. And to be able to connect with them and support them and help them do what they want to do in their Blue Ridge communities is um, it makes it fun to come to work. We now have eight chapters in Blue Ridge communities with over 700 volunteers and 1,500 members. So for almost a decade, we have had a Virginia specialty license plate that has become one of our major revenue streams. And what that allows us to do is support our programs and operations here in Virginia. So prior to our shift in focus, that money would support the parkway and would um, primarily fund the restoration team, a specialized arborist team that would come in to clear vistas and overlooks. Um, moving forward, starting in 2020, we reinvested that money into Blue Ridge communities looking for opportunities to um, build playgrounds, develop trails, um, host concerts, an assortment of all kinds of things. In 2020, we were in the midst of a COVID lockdown and we were looking for a way to engage volunteers and members virtually. In doing so, we partnered with the Junior Appalachian Musicians and produced an hour-long PBS special to showcase upcoming young musicians who are really inspired by the musical tradition of the Blue Ridge region and hope to carry it on. One of the friends' pillars is youth outdoors. So we're looking for ways to engage, whether it's youth hikes, uh, student groups visiting uh, the greater Blue Ridge region from outside of this area. So we host groups from Boston University, University of Notre Dame, um, NC State, University of North Carolina. Uh, so they come either for a long weekend or a full week and they're looking for ways to do community service but also learn about the unique cultural heritage of this region. We haven't done a major fundraising event since the fall of 2019. So this year will be our first ever Blue Ridge Jamboree where we are hosting a music concert a large one 
that will benefit our organization so we can keep doing more of what our chapters are doing in their local communities. Planning a fundraising event of this magnitude is beyond what we're capable of doing internally. Partnering with Buzz for Good is going to help us pull off an event that we wouldn't be able to do otherwise. But who was going to perform at the Blue Ridge Jamboree? For that, I reached out to my good friend, Jack Henshelwood, former executive director of The Crooked Road, Virginia's Heritage Music Trail, and an accomplished guitarist. I was hoping he could recommend a few bands. Instead, he offered up a program he was producing to honor the 100th birthday of famed flat-picking guitar legend Doc Watson. And he was teaming up with legends in their own right, Wayne Henderson, Jack Lawrence and T. Michael Coleman. We are so looking forward to doing the Blue Ridge Jamboree and presenting Doc at 100, the celebration of Doc Watson who meant so much to the Blue Ridge region. He was a native of it and to be able to bring his music and work with friends of the Blue Ridge to celebrate part of uh, the rich musical culture here is just pretty special. Howdy, I'm Wayne, and uh, so I'd say a little bit about Doc. I'm from southwest Virginia, and Doc was a fairly close neighbor. You know, he lived close by. I met him back in the 60s in a music store in Boone, North Carolina, and he's always been an influence, and uh, you know, one of the finest folk musicians that I've ever known, and, and I've considered him a friend, and he... I built guitars for him and worked on his instruments, and he bought them chairs for me and uh, stuff like that. And Doc was, besides being a musical hero, he was a pretty close friend. Eight more miles from Louisville, coming to my view. Eight more miles on the soul road, now I'll never more be blue. I knew someday that I'd come back, I knew it from the start. Eight more miles to Louisville, oh. With the concert program settled, I knew we would need help promoting it, which of course led me to Big Lick Comics. My name is J.D. Sutphin. I'm the owner and creative director of Big Lick Entertainment. Uh, we're a multifaceted uh, events marketing consulting company uh, that's been in existence since 2013. Uh, we do everything from signature events like the Big Lick Downtown Countdown, the Big Lick Comic Con, Flat Picket Fridays, Umwood Country Night. Uh, but we also work with tons of businesses, organizations, nonprofits uh, on marketing, consulting, branding, uh, growth strategies, uh, and a lot more. It's something we're super passionate about um, and we have a lot of fun with what we do. Uh, and that fun actually led into the building that you're in right now, which is uh, a, a company that I own with my brother, Adam Sutphin, uh, Big Lick Comics. The Jamboree concept is something that's near and dear to my heart because uh, I grew up in the bluegrass world. And in bluegrass, you know, music is family, music's your life, music's your soul. Um, and my own grandmother put on shows just like this at the Performing Arts Theater here in Roanoke the first Saturday every month. She was one of the founding members of the Fiddle and Banjo Club. Uh, and I know that if she was here, she'd be in the front row. 
So for me as a guitar player to have Wayne Anderson at a show is pretty epic. I mean, this is a guy that's built guitars for Eric Clapton. So the fact that he's strolling in and not only gonna be playing uh, homage to music that means something to him, that's really important. Uh, you know, to me, what we do with Big Lick Entertainment is, you know, friends of the Blue Ridge and yourself, you guys are providing the steak. We're hoping to just provide some sizzle. So what we kind of do is to try to get the message out in as many ways as possible. So uh, whether we're on social media, creating the graphics, uh, creating the you know the social media Facebook page and stuff like that for it, but then also uh, helping with billboards, helping with TV, radio, and facilitating every aspect of that marketing uh, to make sure it's going to reach just as many people as possible. So they'll hopefully pick up some tickets uh, and see all the fun that night. With Blue Ridge Jamboree planning and promotion in good hands, it was time to hit the parkway with Julie Whalen to see firsthand what friends of the Blue Ridge's 1,500 members and 700 volunteers are doing in their communities. I do not sing, so this is not a carpool karaoke. <laughs> that would be fun. Would it? Would it be fun? <laughs> it would be fun. All right. All right. Road trip. Road trip. Let's visit some friends' chapters. We're starting in Waynesboro at Friends' northernmost chapter, Humpback Rocks. We'll bypass for today the next chapter south, Peaks of Otter, and stop next in the Roanoke Valley. From there, the Rocky Knob chapter in the New River Valley, followed by the Fisher Peak chapter, which is doing a lot of work in Galax and Hillsville. We'll then cross the state line to visit Sparta, North Carolina, home base of the Northern Highlands chapter. And we'll have to save for another episode, Friends' final two chapters, High Country that covers Boone and Blowing Rock, and finally, Asheville. So I'm Karen Orlando, and I am chapter chair of Friends of the Blue Ridge Humpback Rocks region, and I'm also president and founder of the Blue Ridge Children's Museum. Um, right now, we're at the Blue Ridge Children's Museum at our natural playground, and that's where Friends kicked in because it was a natural tie-in to their mission um, about children and families learning about the outdoors and getting people connected um, and doing a nice community project. So they actually funded the vast majority of this playground um, and it, it's been a wonderful opportunity for so many families. During COVID, they had an outdoor space to go to. And then our grand masterpiece is our slide. That's um, a rock hill that was not a hill before. We actually had to bring in quite a bit of dirt to make this um, hill and slide. And we're gonna be adding more rocks to it, but um, the slide is a great centerpiece for our playground for kids to go down. <laughs> So the paintings are a current project that we're working on and actually Friends has generously helped pay for our artist, um, Chicho Lorenzo, who's up there on his ladder. Um, and what this is, it's a, it's a wonderful, exciting, interactive opportunity where families get to um, work with their children and the children are creating drawings of themselves as bugs, flowers, or birds or other creatures, you never know what they're gonna send us, but that's kind of the general thing, something in nature. And um, he is recreating, they're submitting them to us, and then he's recreating those drawings up on the wall. And what it's going to be is sort of a meadow with all of these creatures within them. And we're tying it into the beautiful mural up above it with the tulips and that's it's going to be sort of like a tulip garden so we're so grateful that friends was able to help with this funding and i mean every day there's children here playing and it makes me so happy my name is libby wilcox and i am chairman of the rocky knob chapter of the friends of the blue ridge and that chapter area runs from mile marker 150 to mile marker 200 which is the fancy gap area one of the first projects we did is to hang flower baskets one in front of each merchant all through Fancy Gap and Meadows of Dan. And the merchants were very happy. They really added some touch of spring just as we were getting started this spring. Right now we're at Robertson Mill, which is near Floyd, Virginia. And this is where they are working on redoing the whole mill. We were able to make a financial donation to the Friends of the Blue Ridge. And now we are waiting for them to call us to call my volunteers when they have a work day and start really doing physical work. That's what we like to do. We like to do things where you can see a difference. And we're kind of the boots on the ground area group here and we're waiting for her to call us to start working. Robertson Mill was built in the 1880s and then my um, grandfather bought it in 1931. 
and he ran it up until his death in 1966, and then my father ran it for a while until things started to deteriorate. Friends of the Blue Ridge were a godsend to us. We, I got a call out of nowhere, and uh, Libby was very helpful in helping us get started and showing us uh, some ways that they could help volunteer-wise and funding-wise. In the future, we look forward to Friends of the Blue Ridge coming to help us out. Um, we hear they're a very active group and we look forward to their uh, assistance in anything that we uh, attempt to do in the future. My name is Kerry Sims. I'm the local chairperson for the Fisher Peak chapter of Friends of the Blue Ridge. So the Fisher Peak chapter is named that because on top of the Blue Ridge Music Center is the mountain that's called Fisher Peak. And so that's our section of the parkway. It's 17 miles between Fancy Gap and the North Carolina State Line. Well, this year we've mainly focused on three projects. Uh, the Sydney Allen Home is a historic home in the area on Highway 52 near Fancy Gap. And we put in a pollinator garden behind it and as well as helping control the vegetation on the front slope so it doesn't look like it's highly eroded, which is what it was looking like. Hello, I'm Jennifer Bunn and a member of the Friends of the Blue Ridge. We're in Fancy Gap, Virginia at the historic Sidney Allen home. In 1912, Sidney Allen was at the Hillsville Courthouse. He and his family were there because his nephew was on trial. Sidney Allen built and lived in this house one year earlier. Shots broke out in the courtroom and his, Sidney Allen and his family came back here to Fancy Gap to hide out. The Sidney Allen house today is owned by the historic Society of Hillsville. My mother-in-law, Ruth Bunn, uh, volunteered to donate all the plants, and my daughter, Vivian, had also worked with her and was uh, a big help in putting the plants in. My Girl Scout troop came and worked and put in the plants. The Friends of the Blue Ridge group came, put in plants, mulched, helped weed. We all just come together as a big group uh, periodically to work on these gardens. We also uh, have donated $4,000 to help start the Carroll Arts Center, which is housed in the Carter Home in Hillsville. Hi, I'm Jay Furman. I'm a member of the Friends of the Blue Ridge and executive director for the Carroll County Creative Arts Center. About a year ago, a little more than a year ago, there was not an art center here in Hillsville, or the county has not ever had an art center. This house was brought to my attention, so I went to the foundation's board. I presented my idea. They loved it and they decided to donate a few rooms for our use to get started, where we have two galleries, a classroom, and a classroom in, in the process. Friends of the Blue Ridge was very generous. They came forward, open arms, loved the idea, and it's been a wonderful partnership ever since. The town is expanding their farmer's market, which was behind the courthouse, which is next door. They're expanding it to now encompass the land behind us. I love installing pollinator gardens and I propose a pollinator garden in between the two properties here and uh, they didn't have too much, uh, too much in the way of funding for landscaping so I approached the Friends of Blue Ridge and I said can we install a pollinator garden? They said sure. One of the projects that we're really excited about was putting, helping the town put this playground in called Brittany's Playground. Brittany has a chromosomal abnormality that caused her to need a lot of assistance with ambulation and with day-to-day -day activities. And so as she grew up, it was hard for her to participate in regular activities or typical activities, I should say, with her peers because she needed those increased mobility supports. And here we are in 2022 with it behind us. And a lot of that is thanks to Friends of the Blue Ridge. They ask us uh, what we would like we sent them a wish list that was purely wishes, and they replied um, within a day, all their wishes will come true. And uh, they donated money for the, um, the fence and the solar lights and trash cans and more. And not only did they, did, they did they donate the money, they donated their time. They've been here um, at the opening, they've spread the mulch, they're still asking what they can do, and it's been a fabulous collaboration with Friends of the, Friends of the Blue Ridge. When we were friends of the Blue Ridge Parkway, all we did was work along the parkway, which was great. We had a lot of dedicated volunteers, but once we expanded into the communities around the parkway, we've had a lot more opportunities open up. We've increased our active members by at least threefold just in the past year. 
My name is Joyce Spees and I am chair of the Northern Highlands Chapter Friends of Blue Ridge. And my region starts at the North Carolina-Virginia state line and goes south to Deep Gap, which is almost to Boone. The park originally was built as an um, Eagle Scout project. And so the young man, you know, raised all the money, got the help to do, got the pad poured and everything else. And it was very popular for about 10 years. And then because it was built out of plywood, it began to deteriorate and became unsafe. And so the town had to lock it and prevent further use. Um, and as I say, when I saw that young man in there just looking around, knowing he couldn't use any of the ramps, I thought, we got to see what we can do. <laughs> And so that's when I called friends, and being ever the optimist, <laughs> Julie said, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> Not knowing, neither one of us, um, what it was going to cost us in the end. But being the cockeyed optimist that I am, I figured we can do this. We will make it work. And I'm really pleased to see how strongly that the friends has flipped its mission. And I think some of the projects that are coming down the pipeline from the organization itself and from the various chapters um, are benefit uh, each of the communities along the road. My name is Greg Martin. I'm the Outdoor Services Manager for Roanoke County's Parks, Recreation and Tourism. And today we're at Explorer Park on the beautiful Blue Ridge Parkway. Um, Explorer Park is a 1,400 acre park, both on Roanoke County side and the Bedford County side that offers a wide range of outdoor recreation uh, amenities for the public and visitors in the area. Friends has been a great partner through the years by wanting to support programs um, and music um, and other sensory experiences that guests and the public can enjoy out at the park. So over the last two years, uh, Friends has helped us establish an outdoor classroom at the park and basically funded the resources required for us to offer SOLs uh, to local school groups that come out and work with our park interpreters and naturalists uh, to take care of those requirements. And so this year, uh, we're so excited. Construction's actually happening right now. Uh, Friends was one of two major partners uh, that allowed us to construct a playground, um, which happens to include uh, 27 ADA features on it, um, sensory features, a large swing, and that will be done here probably within the next two weeks. Um, very excited about that. That's going to be a great addition to the park. The customer experience has definitely risen to a new level uh, through all the year-round um, wonderful opportunities that Friends uh, of the Blue Ridge and their donations are allowing us to pursue. Way downtown, fooling around, took me to the jail. Hold me and it's so mine, ain't no one to go my bail. It was like last night when Willie came home, I heard him rapping on the door. He was slipping and sliding with his new shoes on, Papa says, Willie, don't And I just wanted to say hi, I'm Julie Whalen from Friends of the Blue Ridge, and I'm really excited that you guys are here tonight. Thank you for being here. Well, thanks, thanks Julie. Our pleasure. Mm -hmm. My pleasure. All right, I will let you get back to it. All right. Oh, I think we're done. <laughs> oh, well oh, that done. was it. <laughs> Even better. One arm around this old guitar, the other one around my dear. Way downtown, fooling around, took me to the jail. Hold me and it's so fine, ain't no one to go my way.
Way downtown, a fooling around, took me to the jail. Hold me and it's over. Ain't no one to go my bed. Thank you.